Yeah, the shin muscular dystrophy is a muscle wasting disease that eats away a person's muscles as time goes on. So when I was just six years old, that's when I was officially diagnosed with this disease. But common symptoms are as I was walking on my tippy toes, I was falling to the floor frequently, I was not able to keep up with my peers, and I was just really, uh, really fatigued. And so then eventually, as I progressed and got older, I lost my ability to walk at age 11, as my muscles and my legs got too weak to bear any weight. And then in my teenage years, I started to lose mobility in my arms as those muscles are attacked as well. And the worst part about the disease is it is fatal. And the reason it's fatal is because the heart and diaphragm are muscles as well. And those two will be attacked. But I'm very hopeful and optimistic about the future. And I think that a cure is coming really soon. Yeah, and I know you want to be a part of finding that cure. How did you react when you found out you had the disease? Now, I know you're you know, six years old, but uh, and then even before that, I know that your parents were concerned. But when you really grasped what the situation was, how did you react? Well, I didn't know too much about the disease. You know, I didn't know it was fatal. I learned that when I was like 15 years old. But when I was six, you know, I, people would always ask me, why do you walk on your tippy toes? Why do you, you know, move like that? You know, what's wrong with you? And I never really had an answer for them. But when I learned that I have a disease and it's called the shin, I now had a you know a name to the problem and I could just tell people, well, I have a disease called the shin. So that's kind of how I took it. It didn't really change my life all that much when I was younger. I didn't really think uh, too hard about it. So it wasn't real. I mean, obviously it was affecting your life, but you weren't letting it just really put you down. You kept on going. Absolutely. You know, we're big believers in that at, at my house that, you know, we're not our disease. We're not the wheelchair. Uh, we don't let obstacles get in our way, but we just keep on going, just keep pressing forward. So that's really the mentality that my parents have instilled in me since I was a little kid. And uh, that's the mentality that I have today. Now, I mentioned that you made a decision at 16 to have physical therapy over surgery. It had never been done before. Why did you make that decision, Elijah? Yeah, you know, I didn't want a metal rod inserted into my back. And me and my doctor, we went back and forth. Uh, and this is actually where the title of my book comes from, A Small Lift. We're going back and forth. I said, you know, I don't want to have the surgery, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually, you know, I asked him, I said, well, hey, look, if I was able to reverse the current state of my spine, because my spine was all curved and, and messed up, my spine's not straight. And I said, if I was able to reverse the, the current state of my spine, could I avoid having to have the surgery? And he says, look, I don't want to give you any false hope. As your doctor, I got to really put my foot down and push for you to have the surgery. I never seen this done before. It's basically medically impossible. But because I know you, I will give you a small if, hence the title of my book, A Small If. And so from that day forward, I had a sliver of hope that if, if I was able to, to somehow reverse the current state of my spine, I wouldn't have to have the surgery. So from that day forward, I went to physical therapy, did intense stretching. I worked out every single day at my house. I even taught myself how to cook so I could eat healthier, you know, drive the wheelchair at one hand, carrying the pan in the other, um, doing all these great things, lots of prayer, lots of visualizing to set the mentality that I need to, you know, focus on this, you know, imagine myself working hard and all the pain and all the things I'm going to have to go through in order to make this happen. Um, and then three months later, go back to the doctor's do the x-ray and my spine is straight. I pulled it off. I just needed that small sliver of hope, that possibility. And, you know, once I had that possibility, I went out and made it happen. You were born with a, a strong will, man. And, uh, you know, enduring the pain and all the things that you've gone through. So the spine is straight. So obviously the physical therapy worked. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I feel good. I'm happy. I'm moving forward. Um, I'm more ambitious than I've ever been. Um, but, you know, I feel good. And I, and I honestly, I thank God for that. You know, he's sustaining me to be alive another day. And I, and I really do believe that. I believe that, you know, God determines when you're when you're going to die. And and for some reason, he still got me here to, to serve him and to accomplish his goals. And so that's what I'm doing. And so I, I thank God for that. Truly. And we, yeah, we pray you're going to be around a long time. Now, you mentioned you wrote the book, A Small If, with the inspiring story of Elijah Stacy, a young man with a fatal disease and his mission to find a cure. And so you talked about uh, how you came up with the name uh, when the doctor said small if. I, I mean, is that something that just really stirred in you? Like a, like for some people be, wow, there's a really, really small chance. But for you, Elijah, it seemed to spark something in you. 
Yeah, no, I love when people doubt me. I love when, and I love my doctor, by the way. I love my doctor. We're still friends today. He's just, you know, he's, he, he, he has my best intentions in mind. But when people doubt me or they say this is going to be too hard, you know, my, my whole life has consisted of that. You know, people saying you're in a wheelchair, you can't do this, or you're too young to start a nonprofit at age 15, or you're young, you know, why are you going to write a book? Who do you think you are to write a book? You know, I like when people tell me I can't do this or that because it gives me great motivation to go do exactly that. So, um, so yeah, it gave me a lot of motivation and, and, and just the idea that I can go and do something that isn't been done before, you know, um, gives me goosebumps. I, I love pulling off greatness and I consider that um, to be greatness. I believe that doing hard work and doing things that are really hard is great. Well, if you write another book, uh, a big if should be the name of that book. And I know you could probably write many books, podcasts and all sorts of things. So let's talk about your faith in Jesus. Uh, you're passionate about your faith. You're a passionate guy. Uh, and you believe that there is actually a purpose for your suffering. Um, how does that then kind of, you know, resonate with you and reconcile with your faith in Jesus? Right. So, I mean, one of the major things I do is every Monday I lead a Bible study with about 20 to 30 people, um, people my age in my, my backyard. Um, and we've mm -hmm. been doing that for about two years now. And I really, what I see, right, when I reflect on that is because of my disability, because of my disease, because of the suffering I go through, it makes me a, a great messenger to be able to, you know, talk to people about suffering and that it has a purpose. And and I believe that my suffering brings people um, closer to salvation, you know, because when you see me and then you see that all the joy I have, you know, I believe it's truly supernatural. It's the joy of the Lord, you know, and I have this peace about me. You know, it says that um, that God can give us a peace that transcends human understanding. And, and I think that's really it. You know, we can't really rationalize why I have peace and why I'm OK with you know, my disease and situation, but I believe it, it, it's God. And um, we see that throughout the whole Bible, you know, uh, Paul wrote, you know, Philippians, you know, when he was in, when he was uh, in prison and, and it's one of the, you know, one of the books that really resonates with me. Um, and so we just see that throughout, throughout the whole thing, but I truly believe that you can use your suffering um, for a purpose. And it definitely seems like God uh, definitely lets, uh, at least allows people to go through these trials in order to bring them closer to him. And I know a lot of people wonder why, you know, why would God allow me to have this disease or why would he allow this evil or suffering? But, but when you really think about it, it's, it's when you're on your knees, it's when you hit bedrock, that's when you need God the most, you know, when you're rich and good health and everything's fine, you know, you, you act as if you don't need God, even though you do, but it's when you hit that low point in your life, that's when you really cry out to God and you draw close to him. And, and I believe that's what God wants at the end of the day is he wants a close relationship with us. And, um, you know, that's all that really matters. So if it takes me to suffer, to help other people get closer to God or to, for me to get closer to God, then amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, you talk about even, you know, in the book, you were you were bullied in school, uh, you know, and, but you didn't let it defeat you. And uh, you actually took this negativity and turned it into what you call rocket fuel. Explain that, Elijah. Yes. Rocket fuel. Love rocket fuel. So rocket fuel. Uh, is one of the many lessons in my book. Um, you know, there's different lessons at the end of each chapter. Um, and, and so Rocket Fuel basically says that when people doubt you or they bring negative energy towards you, you can use that as your motivation, as your rocket fuel to do whatever they're saying that you can. So if you believe that you can do something, prove to yourself that you're right about your abilities and they're wrong about who they say you are. And that's Rocket Fuel. So, you know, if somebody says that I can't get straight A's, which is what happened uh, in my book. I went out and got straight A's because I believed I could and I believed they were wrong. You know, um, if they say that you can't reverse the current state of your spine, I believe I can. I'm going to go and do it. You know, that's rocket fuel. It's using their doubt as motivation to prove, you know, oh, you're going to doubt me. Well, okay, I'm going to show you that I'm correct. I know me more than you know me. That's what rocket fuel is about. Oh, I just love that. I'm going to use that uh, when I go through difficult situations. Uh, before we leave, I want to talk about your parents, because I have a feeling that they are one of the reasons that you are the way that you are so passionate and uh, you're not going to let things get you down because you had a younger brother, Max, that uh, died of Duchenne. You've also have an older brother who has that. Tell me about your amazing parents. Yeah, so my parents are 100 percent. Um, just amazing people who, you know, they do so much for their kids. Uh, and they gone through so much in their life. You know, I really have to give so much credit to my parents for, for who I am. You know, my parents never, 
put me in a box and, oh, you're in a wheelchair, you know, you can't do this and, oh, your life is so hard and, oh, we're so miserable. They've never done that. My parents are people that never let me use the wheelchair as an excuse and push me towards greatness. Even when I thought, hey, you know, you're kind of pushing me a little bit hard, but but I, I appreciate that because it's made me who I am today. It's made my little brother who has my disease as well, who he is today. Uh, my older brother, who is completely healthy, uh, it's made him who he is today. And, um, you know, and we have all turned out to be uh, pretty good kids, in my opinion. You know, my older brother is about to get married. Uh, my younger brother, Kai, he's in school. And my other brother, Max, you know, he, as you said, he passed away and he's with the Lord today. But um, I think we've all turned out to be pretty good kids. And, and, and you got to give that to the parents. That's parenting right there. Wow. You know, amazing parents and your strong faith in Jesus, 19 years old, you've already written a book, you're podcasting, you're doing all sorts of things. I can hardly want, wait to watch what uh, the Lord accomplishes in your life, Elijah. The name of the book is A Small If, The Inspiring Story of Elijah Stacy, a young man with a fatal disease and his mission to find a cure. And I just have a feeling that uh, God's going to use you to find that cure. How can we get a hold of you? How can we follow you, Elijah? Yeah, I appreciate that. And you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, wherever, you know, all social media. Um, it's at Elijah J. Stacy. So Elijah and then just the letter J, Stacy. And if you want to email me questions, I'd love to answer questions. Uh, you can go to my personal website. It's ElijahJStacy.com. You can find all my social media and news and all kinds of things I do on there. So ElijahJStacy.com or at ElijahJStacy on social media.